Hello. I've got for you today the 2023 April release from Mont Blanc. This is the first pen in their new Masters of Art series. Homage, this is homage to Vincent van Gogh. Uh, so in 2022, they discontinued their Patron of Art series. And after 30 years, I think it's quite appropriate and have started now a Masters of Art series where they uh, dedicate each year a pen to, obviously, an artist. Uh, I think it's an interesting way to increase the, uh, I guess, the appeal of these pens. Vincent van Gogh is far more of a uh, household name than something like Hadrian or Montezuma, so by Increasing the, the uh, I guess the fame or the, the awareness of the character of the subject, they increase the demand, and then of course, because supply remains the same, prices may go up. So this series, this Masters of Art series, because it is replacing their flagship limited edition series, is continuing the same. Uh, the same schedule for numbers of releases. So they've got a 4,810, a 888, this one, uh, and then some lower digit, double digit numbers uh, for their artisanal versions and then the high artistry version as well. Uh, but this year, with this series, they've also added a another uh, tier, I guess you could call it, to their line. Uh, there, there is a 167 limited edition number that is, I guess, aimed at a certain gap in the market. If you can believe it or not, there's a gap in the market for these types of pens. Uh, and that's sort of a, an interesting pen, but uh, I tend to stick with the triple eights. So, Vincent van Gogh, wonderful, uh, wonderful artist. Uh, they may have strayed into uh, a bit of, I guess there's no other way of putting it, but merchandising territory with the uh, Ferrari pen. I brought out last year or the year before, and uh, this year I think they're running the risk of, uh, I guess there's no gentle way of putting it, but with competing with gift shop pens. So if you've ever been to a museum, gift shop, they've often got pens dedicated to their various subjects, and indeed the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam has pens that depict various various uh, pieces of work from Van Gogh. I think he's got 2,000, 2,000 over different pieces of art. Uh, not all of them, of course, are paintings, uh, but definitely somebody who was very prolific in his time, despite the luck he had with his uh, demand. So, Definitely the epitome of a starving artist. Uh, wonderful blue box with his portrait on it. Uh, and then a little inscription plate. Uh, and inside we've got the pen. They've not quite... Uh, well, they have improved on previous year's pens. I always had an issue with the the homogeneity of the pens. They weren't quite cohesive lately, so the Victoria and Albert from last year had very boring barrels and very ornate caps. This year they've done something like it, but uh, there is a bit of hope, there's a bit of variety in the barrel in that uh, it does have a bit of a bit of glitter, uh, something of course designed to resemble the the starry nights, 
and a bit more than simply a monochrome background. So there is a bit of pearlescent that is varies between the well, varies over the barrel. Uh, of course, because this is from a prolific artist, there's quite a lot to draw on when it comes to symbolism. And, well, going over it, I think, I think I recall, we've been waiting for this for quite a while, I think I recall a few of the elements. So, of course, Van Gogh took inspiration from quite a few different places, and one of the places that he enjoyed quite a lot, I think, was Japan, and they they chose the overall shape of the pen to be from a Japanese wood cutting instrument, the, the tool they use to make uh, the, the wood block prints uh, that he enjoyed. So that's, that's the reason that this little recess is milled into the cone. Otherwise, the cone is actually quite boring. Uh, it's just silver. I'm not sure if it's platinum, or I think it's platinum, uh, but the fittings are all gold, uh, so it is, it's not, it's not a brass pen, hopefully. Uh, so on the ring, we've got a, I think the year of his death, 1889. I think he died rather young, around 37, something like that, late 30s. Uh, and then gold, gold trim to uh, accentuate the, the transitions between the cap, the bear, or the cone, the barrel, and then the, the section. So I love the aesthetic of this pen, but I usually go for pens that have something different with them. So this year, I think, is the first year in a triple eight series that they've, well, they've chosen to make the emblem out of something other than rather of pearl or, well, it, this year it's gold. Uh, I think a beautiful choice, nice little gold Mont Blanc emblem embedded in a, uh, a surround, two-tone surround, pearlescent light blue over dark blue that very much uh, pulls its style from his starry night. So those big swirls that uh, you see on the, the starry night that he's quite known for. Uh, on the, well, the clip is designed to, I would say not convincingly, be a palette knife. So this section is supposed to be a palette knife, something that they use to uh, spread oil paint, oil-based paint, on canvas. I'm not sure if that's accurate. It feels more like a... Uh, a woodwind with the holes at the top, but, well, I've never used palette knives, so what do I know? Uh, and then the upper part of the clip, where it joins the cap, is of course designed to be a pipe. Would have made more sense, I think, to have the entire thing be a, a pipe, but there, two elements pushed together artificially. Uh, so the pipe, of course, with the bulbous end, and here we've got a citrine gem adorning the bulbous end. Not a bad touch. Uh, I don't know if they chose the citrine because of its resemblance to tobacco, but I don't know what a pipe that's been stuffed with tobacco looks like, so who knows. Uh, the rest of the cap is designed, of course, to, uh, well, to evoke one of his paintings. This painting is the uh, I think it's the wheat field. So he's got a relatively famous painting with the top half that is mostly, uh, of course, dark night, and the lower half that's mostly a, a yellowish orange that represents wheat fields. And then this this aesthetic is designed to reminisce that. The the embellishments here, or I should say the details here, on the gold, of course, they're inscribed in it, but on the blue, they're supposed to be uh, etched in it. They called it a guilloche effect. It isn't guilloche, of course, it's, it's just uh, an effect, but it looks almost printed from here. But I'm sure it's guilloche. And then the rest of the, the blue is just a monochrome blue. So 
I'm not too keen on opening it. I've said that about my last few pens, but hmm. I don't think I'm going to use it. I can't, definitely can't take this to work. Uh, stands out far too much. But let's see what's in the box. So, along with the presentation case, you've got a note once again to the dear collectors about updates. And then, as usual, a booklet. This booklet feels actually quite small uh, for, for Mont Blanc. And then nothing else, nothing else in the box. Let's see. So the Patron of Arts series was known for honoring, appropriately, people who supported the arts. Uh, Every year they chose one person from a few different places around the world and then awarded them with uh, funds to support their favorite charity and then, of course, with a Patron of Art pen. This year, uh, I'm not too sure if they'll be continuing that type of activity. Maybe they'll simply begin recognizing uh, artists. So there's the, the pen, the nib. This nib is quite, uh, quite detailed. Um, it has, oh, there's the, the wheat fields and crows, the inspiration for the, the cap. Yeah. There. The nib is adorned with a, I think there's a cherry blossom branch that very much, uh, copies the one of his favorite Japanese prints. So I think achieve, it achieves a pretty good effect. It's not too... It is quite crowded, but it's not... doesn't feel imposing. Uh, your eye is able to follow the twig to the, to the leaves and the blossoms, so it, it sort of gives you a bit of direction. Sometimes when they crowd a nib without uh, having real organization of the elements on it. It looks too ungainly, but here with the, the twig and layout, it works rather well. Oh, almond blossoms. There we go. And then the service guide, as usual, in the, the various languages. Uh, so, once again, they've, they've gone to matte, matte paper, so the printing is a bit, uh, a bit less visually entertaining than, than it has been previously, but still very good pictures. Okay, and there of course is uh, one of his very famous and reproduced paintings, the Sunflowers. So I don't have the 4810 uh, it has a wooden cap and a barrel that more, uh, well, a printed barrel that takes its inspiration from the, the sunflowers. But I think this one achieves a better effect on the whole. Uh, and it is solid gold. I haven't shown much of these sorts of things, but you do have the, not the maker's mark, but the, the assay mark there on the on the cap. I'm pretty sure the limited edition number is under the cap. It's it's on the, the section, but because I'm not opening this, well leave it as it is. So there you have it. This is the first pen in their new series. Oh the box is surprisingly heavy. The first pen in their new Masters of Art series designed to replace their Patron of Art series. Uh, homage to Van Gogh. A wonderful beginning. Looking forward to great things. Let me know if you've got questions or comments.